Welcome to tutorial video number two on creating thumbnail sketches for the scenic designer. Now the first tutorial I did, I started with what looks like an elevation or perspective view of these two very different sets. And then from there we could take these ideas and translate them into a ground plan view and work from that point forward. I realized after speaking with a couple of my students, a lot of students like to begin with the ground plan first. So what I'm going to do is take you step by step on how to create a ground plan of a simple set and move it up into a perspective view. So I'm going to keep this fairly basic so we can get through the video without it being too darn long. So I'm going to do a very simple two wall set with a jog in it. So I'm going to begin by creating a simple wall here that just sort of comes almost to the center line. And then I'm going to go 90 degrees off of that to create a little jog. And then from there, create another jog that is 90 degrees roughly off of it. And then off of that wall, come back down and terminate at the picture plane or the plaster line. So I've got these simple one, two, three, four walls. And within each of these walls, I'm going to put a couple of openings, a couple of architectural elements. So on this one, I'm going to have a simple large window here. And on this wall, we'll have our front door into the apartment or whatever this architectural structure is. Swings in. We'll do a closet door here that would typically open out into the room as well. Closet door here, and just for fun, we'll have a very simple built in bookcase on this wall here that's built into that particular piece of architecture. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and thicken these lines up and be right back. Okay, so now we have these thicker wall indications, it's a little bit easier to see, the header for the doors, and I'll also add in the floor line of what it would look like where the actual set stops. So I'm going to extend off of that 90 degrees, and off of this wall as well 90 degrees. So we know this is our playing space here. And for a later tutorial, I'm going to add in a couple of pieces of furniture that we will plot as well. So I'm going to come in here and just indicate. So, we've got this very simple, basic little set. Now we need to move it up into this perspective view. How do we do that? Well, a very easy way to do it in this case is both of these walls terminate at the picture plane. So, we will be able to use actual or true sizes for that, indicate, at that point of the set as a reference. So, for this show, we're going to say that these walls are 12 foot tall walls. So, up in our elevation view, we had determined this is a 2 to 1 proportion. So, if it's 2 to 1, we can break that um, particular dimension, so it's two inches, so halfway point is right here. Half of, a half, of an, half of one inch is one half inch, so that's right there. Half of half inch is a quarter inch, so that would mean that if this is 20 feet tall, we have 10 feet, 15 feet, half of, half of five is two and a half, so that would be 10 feet plus two and a half feet is 12 foot six. So roughly at the picture plane, a wall would be about that tall. So now how do we find out where it sits on the stage? We can do a simple measurement here as well because that wall actually terminates on the picture plane. So I can measure over and using this as sort of an eighth inch scale if we want to do that. I'm going to put a, a whole number right on the center line and I can count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, well, about, yeah, 11 feet, that looks to be about 10 foot 6 or so. So let's say it's 10 foot 6 over. I transfer that same dimension on the lower part of this picture plane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 foot 6. So roughly right about there, that line should line up right with this one here if we were to draw it straight down, and it does. So we would draw a vertical line here, being parallel to the picture plane. And since we know that this was 10 feet here, 10 feet, 
and this was 12 foot 6 to this point, we can roughly estimate that that's about the height of a 12 foot wall. Now we need to determine what the angle of that wall and how it sits on the stage floor in perspective. Now, if this wall were running perpendicular to the picture plane, all we would have to do is connect this point to our center vanishing point on our horizon line, which is right here. There's our horizon line. It goes right through the, the viewpoint of that person standing there. So if we drew a line like this, that would mean the wall is running perpendicular to the picture plane. It is not. It's running oblique to that. So we know it's going to be more shallow than this steeper angle. So we have to do a bit of guesstimating here. And what I like to do is figure out what the size of this floor is and where the center point is of that floor. An easy way to do that is go right from the proscenium edge, draw straight back to the back wall of the theater, the same way here, and then simply X through that floor in the plan view. And then we're going to create the same look in the elevation view. So this is dead center of the space between the back wall and the upstage edge of the picture plane. We want to do the same thing in this view. So we X from the picture plane all the way to the back wall, back wall, all the way to the picture plane. And its center's point is right on center, so that's completely accurate. And this depth, which is greater than that depth, but those are both exactly the same size in real space because it represents this depth here and this depth here. But because we're looking at it in a foreshortened view, the upstage half of the stage floor is going to look smaller. It's going to look skinnier. So knowing that, it looks like this corner actually is right upstage of halfway. So we know that that corner is going to be somewhere here. And we also know that it's on this side of the center line. So if we come to the center, come to the stage right side of center, and we make a tick, and we extend that point right to the center vanishing point, and we know that this corner is somehow upstage of that center point, it's going to be roughly here, we can then calculate to the best of our ability that that's actually the angle of the, where this wall hits the floor instead of that very steep angle. I hope that makes sense. So now we're going to make the vertical line because all verticals in, a, in this realistic set are completely vertical. And in order to know how to create the top angle, because right now we don't, we don't know what it is. We can't just transfer that angle up to the top. That won't be correct because we need to realize that above this horizon line, which is what this is, horizon line, we are, ha we, are, we are looking down to the horizon line. So at the bottom, the bottom edge of the flat rises up to the horizon line and hits that horizon line somewhere right about here. In order to figure out the height of the wall, we know that the downstage edge is about 12 foot there, so we can put our ruler on the pencil point on the horizon line, connect it to the 12 foot mark on that particular flat, and connect the dots. And now, get rid of that little excess here and here, we have a perfectly 12 by 12, 12 foot tall here, 12 foot tall there, by however long that wall is. We don't know what that length is just yet, but we could check. It's roughly in scale for 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and it's about a 12 by 12 <laughs> wall. So let's go ahead and calculate the other walls and figure out where they're sitting. So this edge, of flat A, and this one's flat B, this one's flat C, this one's flat D. The intersection of flat B and A is right here. And now we know that the off or the other side of flat B, the stage left side of flat B, is on the stage left side of center. So we know it's going to be over on this side of the stage. So we can take a look and say, oh, that's about, well, how many feet? Looks like 18 inches. So if we wanted, we could come to our grid come 18 inches over, which is an eighth of an inch plus a sixteenth, and send that right back to the center vanishing point, and then calculate how far back in space this is. Well, this corner is on the downstage half of the stage floor, so it's going to be somewhere on this part of the line. It's not going to be upstage of that line, because that's the upstage half of the stage floor. So it's going to be about 
almost halfway to the halfway point, so a quarter of the way back in space. So I'm going to guesstimate and say it's right about there. And I know that it intersects that diagonal line, so I connect the bottom like that. And now I know that that angle represents this angle. I'm going to transfer a vertical line for the height of the wall. And now, how do we find the height of that particular angle? We project the base of the wall until it hits the horizon line. And at that horizon line intersection, we connect a dot between the top of the previous flat, which is flat A, where it hits, and we connect it to flat B. And all of a sudden we have a perfectly 12 foot wall at that depth in space. All right, let's do the next one, flat C. Here is the, here is the connecting point between B and C, right there. And we need to find this particular connecting point. It's a little bit downstage of this one, but it's pretty close. So if we wanted, we could transfer that into that intersection point right across the stage. And how far over from center is it? Let's go ahead and measure it. It is one, two, three, four, five. 5 foot 6 is right about here. So let's say 5 foot 6 over from center. So we come down to the center line on our picture plane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 foot 6. That goes right back to center vanishing point again on the horizon line. And where that crossed that line is where I connect the bottom of the flat. So it's roughly right about there. I know this is small. But if you're doing this at home along, you'd, you'd see these lines a little bit easier. And then we can create the vertical line for that the height of the wall. And we know it's going to be shorter than this point because it's further upstage, so it's foreshortening. How do we know how to get it accurate? We transfer this line back to the horizon line. It's right about there. And we connect those lines. So if this angle hits right about here. That angle should be at the same angle because these two walls are parallel to one another. So we connect that. And now we have this wall, flat C. And now we our last wall is flat D. So it's also on the picture plane. We can measure over from center. It is 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 foot 6 over, so we come over here and do 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 foot 6, right about there, is on the picture plane, so I can connect that directly to that corner, and that's what it, the angle of that flat on the floor. Do a construction line for the vertical, and then wherever this wall hit the horizon line, which should be the same angle as this one, and it is, because those walls are those walls are parallel to one another. This wall is parallel to this wall. So they're going to terminate at the exact same vanishing point. So this goes from here, all the way up to here, and rotate that up until it intersects with the corner of the wall here. So you're touching on the horizon line, and you're touching at the top and you create the top angle of the wall. And there you have the basic perspective for this simple two wall set with a jog in the center. Now we'd like to add that window into this particular wall. So again, verticals. If you want to find the center, if this wall, this window were centered on this wall, you could do the same Xing through trick that we did on the floor. You X through that wall and you draw a perfectly vertical line through that point. And you can see this is the downstage half of that wall, that's the upstage half. But that's much shallower than that because it's further away from you, it's foreshortening. So I'm going to put that window on center there. It's a little bit off here, but let's, I want it to be center. So that means if I'm going to have the window and here on this side, that's the side of that's half of the window. I need at least that and then some on the downstage side to compensate for the foreshortening. So I'm just going to draw this space between here and center 
greater than this space. And to find the bottom of the sill, we go to where it intersects the horizon line again. We, we pivot up to the bottom of the window, draw the bottom in, maintain that pivot point, and we go to the top of the window, and there's your top of the window. Okay. All right. Now we want to create this doorway opening. So I'm just going to guess that this is a little bit closer to downstage. So because I can do that X through method if I want to here, I X through that wall. Find my vertical point right through the center. That is the upstage half of this wall, and this is the downstage half. So the door is not on center, it's further downstage. So I'm going to assume that my door lives here. I'd like it to sort of have this end to be closer to center, even if it doesn't look exactly like that. That's what I want. And then wherever the bottom of that wall hits the horizon line, we pivot to create the top or the header of that door. Okay. Same thing goes for this simple little wall or the door on that wall. That one's pretty easy to do. Take my verticals. Transfer the bottom angle of the wall to where it hits the horizon line, which is right about there. Pivot it up. And there's my door into whatever that closet is. Calculate this angle. We can come and measure from center. It looks to be one, two, three, four, five, six foot six over from center. So on the picture plane, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six foot six. And I'm going to extend that point to the end of the apron. So I go from my center vanishing point through that six foot six mark. And wherever it hits on this extended part of the apron, which represents this line, I connect those two lines. So that's my angle of the floor there. And we do the same for this side. So I measure over from center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven feet six. So it's seven six, a little bit greater than it was on the other side. So I put my one inch mark right on center and I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven foot six. And I'm making a little indicator right there on the apron and I connect those dots. It's a lot of dot connecting once you figure out where those dots go. And all of a sudden, I'm going to do a quick erase and bring it back and show you what we have. Okay, so what I did is went back and cleaned up a little bit of the eraser marks so you could see the finished product there. And on the next video, what we're going to do is add in these furniture pieces and find them on the floor first and then build their mass as we draw it up. So stay tuned for the third video, third installment.